Ready to go. Good evening, everyone. Town of Eastern Store Commission, December 12, 2018. 11th, I'm sorry. Um, first on the agenda, um, we're going to approve approval of minutes of November 13th. Everybody's had a chance to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can you motion, please, to accept? Okay, first. Motion yeah. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you want to designate one adult in the voting member in Mr. Stranger's absence? We need three for a quorum. We have four full members. And we've got five people here. No, six, right? So who's on? So Mickey will be our eligible? Yeah, okay. You can all discuss. <laughs> Oh, I won't be voting. All right. Thank you. Um, public hearing 108 Canton Street Tufts Farm Kennel Outbuilding Demolition Review Application. Um, we need to open this officially. Um, yep. So the commission will remember that at the November 13th meeting, the commission found a Tufts Farm historically significant. Therefore, we're having a public hearing tonight. Uh, so we need to formally open the public hearing. Okay, public hearing is now, now open. open. Okay. And I don't see anyone here. Um, uh, it's owned by the Conservation Commission. Andrea Langhouse, our conservation agent, is at another meeting next door. Um, she can stop in if people have questions for mm -hmm. her. Um, I've been to the property. Tim's been to the property. Um, so. I wasn't refreshing my memory, but the last meeting, weren't we in the agreement that it wasn't worth? We found it historically significant. Correct. So therefore, we have to have a public hearing. Right. Which and is what this is. that's where we are right now. So now, uh, yeah, yeah, we've decided that it's. So the options are, under the bylaw, not preferably preserved, not preferably preserved subject to conditions, or preferably preserved. So the commission could make a motion, those three have a conversation, motion a second, a discussion, and then vote. So we need a motion for one of those. I guess let's back up one forget those three for a second if this is going to get torn down would they be replacing there are no plans to replace it at this time so that it would be almost good point well you could preserve it you know if you go back to the three that's yeah if, to remove it and not replace is probably what's going to happen not probably, definitely. But can we break out here for a second, Wayne? Um, and include with this um, the group that's going to be coming out to assess the property to help us? Um, well, sort of uh, further down the agenda yeah. is um, a CPA application for a Tufts Farm assessment. Um, the Conservation Commission has secured a group of graduate students from the Conway School of Landscape Design to come in and do a uh, reuse plan um, for Tufts Farm, and then there will be additional CPA funds, um, if approved by the CPC in a town meeting, to uh, have a, a better management plan for the property and also plans and specifications and budgets for uh, rehabbing um, key aspects of the farmstead. So that is a CPA application and a Conway School of Landscape Design project that will be happening this fall, this spring, and then uh, over summer if we get CPA funds. So the reason I want that mentioned is it's not like we're tearing down a building and walking away from Tufts Farm, that there's some investment, if you will, in the future <coughs> in the farm. They couldn't take on this? No, these are students. These these kids are, you know, landscape, whatever. They're not going to... No, there's no... Uh, <laughs> I don't think any school wants to come down and take, try to do this thing. And Bob had talked about it, the possibility of maybe scrapping it out if we could. And I'll, I'll, I'll look into that if, when the time comes. <clears throat> see if we can't salvage something. So, back to where we started. Need a motion. 
So I'll make a motion that it should be not preferably preserved. Okay. Need a second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's it. Now we need to close the hearing. Oh, yeah, close it. All right. Close. Okay, next up, fiscal year 2020 CPA eligibility applications review and discussion. First up is Southeast <coughs> Cemetery Fence Restoration. Please identify yourselves. Arlene Keach, Secretary. Okay. Joseph Hurley, President. Okay. Um, we do you have a copy of the application? Um, we do. It's my file copy, so don't walk away with it. Okay, so it's a request to restore the fence at the historic 1850 cemetery and install, install sections that are damaged. The four brick piers will receive new stones. Okay, all right. So is everyone familiar with that stretch across from Stonehill College where the fence is yes. missing a few teeth here and there? Um, that was never covered by insurance. <clears throat> yeah. uh, that, you can push those sections over, probably. Yeah, you know, we, hit them too we took them out because they were leaning. <clears throat> okay. I'm assuming quite a little. Yeah. I'm assuming no DeAngelis because they're historical. Do you want to go further with this one? Um, here. Uh, <laughs> So um, the intent in having uh, applicants come to the commission tonight is for uh, the commission to ask any questions about the project um, and to give constructive feedback on how to strengthen the full application, which is due January 9. Um, and also for the applicants themselves to give an overview if they feel so moved um, and then at the January meeting, the commission will prioritize the, um, their recommendations uh, on, on the four CPA applications that are relevant to historic resources. So um, a, a constructive way, I think, to work tonight. Um, perhaps you folks give a short overview of what the proposal is. Um, if we have any uh, questions based on the application that people have looked at, um, over the weekend, and if we have any constructive feedback on additional information that might help the CPC uh, make a, a, a good decision. Um, sometimes applications might be missing components or uh, could use better clarification on certain points, so this uh, provides an opportunity to have that conversation. Right. I think it's pretty clear in the description. We're just repairing and replacing this antique fence. Uh, we have um, we have estimates from DeAngelis um, Foundry, people who, who have a, just a phenomenal reputation for doing this type of work with a great history. You know, Harvard, they repaired the fences there and several places in Boston, so we just relied on them. They actually gave us an estimate uh, to replace some of the fencing that we opted not to do. It was going to be well over $100,000. But we decided that we didn't need to buy new fencing and replicate it. So we thought the most important thing would, would be to restore what we've got, the fencing that's there, fix it, repair it, nuts and bolts, get it ready for painting, not included. And then we have several sections out and back of the storage shed, uh, the pieces that have been knocked down over the years uh, that are just stored out there they're falling apart, they're rusted, and so DeAngelis is going to take that back to their foundry, fix, repair, and reinstall it up front. Will they replicate any pieces as needed? If, yeah, I, I think, yes, I think there's some replication in here. Um, and if I can get a hold of the Boston Grounds Department, they actually have the mold 
for the finial that goes on it. Oh, so we need, you know, if, if anybody knows anybody in the Boston Grounds Department, they have the mold for the finial, which will save us, I don't know, was it like $150? They wouldn't have to remake another mold. We, as I said, we eliminated the, I think, $70,000 to replicate all new fencing. Um, and then we're going to replace the, um, the piers. Um, not re one of them may need to be replaced. We have it down back. They think they can bring it up front, put it on the foundation, and then they're going to put a new um, gray beige mosaic. Uh, granite and a new cap on the uh -huh. top. Get rid of the brick. Um, and that's seventy four hundred dollars. Um, okay. And that will. So will the, the whole run be complete? No. no. That was seventy thousand dollars to do the missing piece, and we just it would be we have making roughly fifty new. feet. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just how many feet? Roughly fifty. Eight it, sections. Six feet it's standing. Oh, front right now? Or you no, no, no. Back. We have those okay. in storage. So that's what's going to be. Wouldn't it be cheaper just to have them make new ones as opposed to? No, no. 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 $74,000. is well over $100,000 for the entire project. Um, so, how are you going to figure out where you're going to? Are you going to compress the. Well, the whole north section is missing. Yeah. So it so you'll leave that that way? Or is that I think that's where we'd like to go in and leave the middle open where okay. the, uh, you know, the the weeping mother yep. statue yep. is. Yep. Where will the other 35 come from? We don't know. Yeah. Maybe we could buy a replica or something that's close. We wouldn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But it just seems 75, I've got a 76,700 is what it would cost uh, to replicate 90 feet. It's on page, it's in your list, on the, maybe the third page of the DeAngelis application. Does the town have any responsibility on any of the cemeteries? Not on that one, that's not town owned. Yeah, we're private. I understand you, you've got an app from DeAngelis. Has anybody else been requested for the mail? No. Their reputation is just so good. <coughs> Excuse me, I understand that. But there, you know, there's other historic cemeteries that have metal work as well. Uh, I thought there was a place in Bridgewater. I was just going to say there was a place in Bridgewater. There's also one in Canton, uh, on 138 in Canton, that does railing work. Uh, but do historic? they do historic restoration? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah, the one in Bridgewater definitely does. Definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Trying, who, who were we trying to get? I think it was on with the, the Doug King. With Doug King. Is yeah. the one on 106 to me? Yeah. They don't know, Joe, for sure. But if you look up uh, historic rail over Bridgewater, I think you'll find it. I can't. I remember looking them up and seeing their website, um, Bridgewater Ironworks or something Possibly. like that. Yeah, something yeah. Ironworks. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I think that's it. It's a big outfit. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things of the historic saying they want to, it's worth a shot. To give a second. I would think so. Yeah. You know, when you go to CPA, CPC, and who, whatever. And somebody else you mentioned? There's another there. company in Canton on 138, I think. It's you don't mean Canton Fence? On the left, right? Yes. They're heading towards? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. I, uh, for some reason, I don't want to say it's all people. No, there's no, 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 Ames Street in Brockton, uh, and they claim they do restoration work too. I don't know much about them. Small shop, mobile shop on Ames Street in Brockton. But I was, you know, just wondering, you have Boston famous cemetery, there's got to be somebody that does their work too. Yeah, okay. You know, it, it Is that a foundry, the one on Ames Street? Uh, no, Ames Street, <coughs> excuse me, it's just a restoration type uh, metal work shop. I believe the one on Turnpike Street in Canton does do all phases. That iron works, if you tap, trying to think of it, the name of it. If you head down 106, take a left on 28, heading to Brockton, it's about a three quarters of a mile on your left. Well, that's West Bridgewater, though. That is West Bridgewater, yeah. Big, big boundary. Huge. All customers. 
I mean, I like to keep our business local too, but sure, you can yeah. save yourself. At least maybe if you submitted something, yeah, some sure. they may they yeah. may want to work enough where they'll adjust it a little bit to help you out. Is it called Dick Brooks and Sons Ironworks? No. no. Stanley? No. Bridgewater Ironworks? Bridgewater Ironworks. What's it on? What's the street? You're not thinking of turn of steel, are you? I am thinking of turnage. Yeah, 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 that's no, not. Yeah, no, no turnage, just a, a supply yeah. house. Yeah. Um, so what I'm hearing is the CPC would like to see uh, at least three estimates for the work in, in the final full application. So. John's our rep for CPC, so just so you know, that's why it's. A total of three you would like. If um, if the other companies don't do this type of restoration, I'll get back to you mm -hmm. and track down more people. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. familiar with Bridgewater Iron Works. I don't remember why I didn't go to them. I think when D'Angelo stepped up and came out, maybe. Any other questions? Yeah, any other discussion? So what will what, once this if you get this money? What's the next step a year from now, two years from now? What will we be doing then? Yeah. Coming back to CPA, or do you have another plan in place? With regard to the fencing? Yeah. We haven't thought that far yet. We haven't gone that far. We didn't know how this was going to work, mm -hmm. you know. We thought to do the whole thing, but it just seemed excessive. Mm -hmm. $76,000 to reproduce. It just which is fine. That's yeah. Yeah. the The important thing was to restore what's real and what we have and what is there. Um, I don't know if you can purchase duplicate. You know, you wouldn't want to, but no. you know. Um, well, at some point you'll have to replicate if you continue to go, right? Yeah. Finish historically start. replicated, not yeah. Bad, you know, Home Depot stuff. No, 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 yeah. but no, they're doing right. exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in. Smith Farmhouse Exterior. Rich Eastman, uh, President of the Board of Smith Farm. Marie Kelly, Eastman Resident and Board Member for Smith Farm. Okay. Can I see this one? No. Okay, so we, we're successful with our last. Incredibly so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Has anyone been, had a chance to go up to see this? I have a couple pictures oh. of oh. 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 So. And feel free to come up closer to the microphone as well. So uh, it's helpful for ECAT as they record sure. to actually hear us talk. For those of you who can't, so this was the house kind of in between um, after we had started some of the construction, but took a pause and took a little beating that during the, the bad weather. Um, it was about a year ago, I think, maybe half a year ago. But um, with the CPA funds, it now looks, the side mm. looks like that, you can see. And the front looks like that. So, so we're in good shape. Was it yes, really as the, um, you know, as they had stipulated before, um, when we first came into this, probably about three or four years ago, uh, we've matched what they wanted as far as having um, having the shakes on the on the uh, east and west sides, and uh, odd as it may seem, the uh, north and south got clabbered. Um, so right now it's kind of a multi-toned farmhouse, uh, but it will be white. Uh, we'll, we have uh, plans early in the spring to have a, a volunteer painting party to go out and take care of things, and it will return to its uh, previous nice white bucolic farmhouse at the end of the field. Um, what was done with the uh, monies received from um, uh, CPA last time was to basically shore up the outside structure to get all of the outside of roofing and get the building sealed tight so it wasn't uh, exposed to the elements. We had problems before where um, water was getting in all over the place and uh, did a number to the interior uh, work that had been done last year when we did uh, 
um, when we when the Lions Club and uh, Lee um, helped us out uh, to match funds, um, we were able to raise forty four thousand then total between the, the ourselves and the two entities and uh, basically got it uh, got the interior structure um, uh, solidified. But uh, this what this did last year uh, or this last fall was to get everything nice and tight um, for the winter. So what we're doing and what we're coming back for now is to um, basically finish off the exterior, do all the last pieces that need to be done, the uh, porch, uh, porches, the foundation for the porches that are kind of crumbling right now. Um, there's two porches, there's also a, uh, the, walk, the entrance to the walkway is crumbling too, um, the old cement that was there before. Um, so it, it, um, that's one of the things we want to have done, the chimney, the um, will be repointed and capped um, the um, the deck around the outside to it allow us to utilize fully a handicapped access to this place because if you're familiar with the program we're going to be doing with veterans wellness uh, that's important to have we're going to be having meetings and sessions inside the house and and bathroom facilities that allows them to come up and utilize that whole area and we need a basement tour we, we have we have plywood right now that uh, is covering up the basement um, that uh, the, the original wood frame rotted out and was taken out so during this construction phase uh, it had been pretty much just boarded up and uh, this will finish off the total exterior this will be done so the back deck is not an eligible cost for historic um, um, it's not it's not. Uh, it, it's, it's not. Okay. Um, so there would be encouragement to come back with a full application um, that breaks out the other items mm -hmm. by discrete tasks and how much they would be. Okay. Um, so you know, Wayne, have you seen, did you gotten the, the estimate that we got from Kevin? I No, I have okay, not. Okay, I'll give you a copy of it there. Yeah. Um, if you guys would like a copy to take a look at what, what Kevin came up with on this thing. And this is also a copy of uh, the overall budget that we've had for this thing. Kind of let you know where it's, where this sits with the, the overall plan. Um, yeah, so a revision of this in your final application to remove the deck? Yeah. We can um, what about windows? Windows are done. They were all in behind they were, them? They're done. They're, well, actually, what, what you see on, on those pictures uh, before, windows are actually there. They're boarded up. Yeah, but uh, some weren't in. Hmm? Some, of the, some of the sashes were not in. They're being done by um, Peter Sayworn up in um, uh, up in Boston. Right. He works. Are you familiar with Peter? Yeah. So okay. the, but, I met him out there. So, yeah. but, okay, that's right. But they will be put in. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the dormers on the front, there wasn't siding on them when Tim and I were out there a yep. month or so ago. Is there siding on it now? Shingles? You know, the sides mm -hmm. of the dormers? I don't know if Kevin's finished up on that or not. He was supposed to have finished okay. the last part. As far as I, I know, he still has his... Um, um, yeah, we did see there was some staging yeah, stuff. Yeah, he has the staging up. Yep, he was supposed to have finished the, the last part. And Tim part. and I also noticed there was not a flashing over one of the side windows. Yeah. You've got metal flashing um, over... West side, east side... The right side as you face it, which would be east. East, east side. Okay. Yeah. Second floor, I believe. Is that the one? Oh, the second floor. Second floor. First. Okay. I don't know. It's obvious. Okay. Okay. Well, this is pretty much broken out then, anyways. Yeah. With the exception so, of deleting the deck. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty easy to piece together what he's got there. He's broken everything up yeah. into individual tasks, so yeah, that was a hard to do that. certainly a challenge with the first application and grant was trying oh, yes. to track what the actual costs were yep. and, and match them up. Yeah, and actually, this this does bring up something you just brought up about the three um, yeah. three estimates. Um, have you ever run into a situation where somebody that was coming back again? and had a lot of success with a particular contractor and wanted to keep that contractor so they only put in one estimate for that one or is it still required to do the three it's and a good idea to do the three because um yeah and, and i mean i understand it, it and, and, and what um you might want to do is take this breakout and get the exact same information 
from a couple of other contractors. Okay. okay. Um, so you can compare yeah. apples to apples, and then you can see if anything is wildly different. Okay. I don't think there is an obligation to go yeah. with the absolute cheapest if you have a very good success of working with someone who knows the building. I would right. do it that person myself. Uh, Kevin, Kevin did very well uh, with this last year in yeah. the pricing and everything. And the other thing was that he was local, Yeah. which is a huge plus. And, I think another, essentially and the fact that he was a veteran was a huge plus. We, we, so. we don't necessarily have to go with the cheapest. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's up. I, I it's, got you. It's, yeah, it's true. Okay. What's reside back clapboard? Oh, that was the um, the back clapboard was a small when they were doing the roof. There was a small issue with one of the pieces got broken, so he has to. I think he has to fix one of the pieces or a couple of the pieces. Five hundred dollars is a lot of clapboard. Hmm. So I'd be curious to see what that is. Yeah. Is your PVC deck going to blend in? Period-wise, with the rest of the house, um, it's the back of the house, so we really don't have too much. Yeah, the, the, we actually have purview over all of it. Yeah, we get a three sixty because it's oh, exterior. It's yeah, it's because it is exterior. That's correct. And I know everybody's using a PVC, but right. down the road, it's not looking as good as when they put it up. The the long term mm. yeah. is that right? And it's, it's a plastic that takes the heat from the weather. Yeah, that's yeah. true. What do you suggest? Go and go and. I mean, there's nothing like stone and wood, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of maintenance work and there's a lot of expense. I understand. Yeah. That, but Let us half as much as if you use the fur. Fur decking is nice. Yeah, right. If you use the fur decking properly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I always say, you know, you just don't throw the fur decking down. I've done this in my own home. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm anal. I put two coats. You've of got this. Oil-based paint. Do you want it? Underneath. Mm -hmm. I can keep these. Before okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three coats on the cut edges. I've had it for 20 years, and it's wow. in perfect shape. Okay. It's an expense, but in the end, if it's, if it's maintained, as you just said, it's, it's, it's probably it. less than PVC. It's half the price. And it, it's going to give you a better appearance. Uh, okay. Stability wise, I think it's going to find yeah. the, the the wooden and the stone are going to be a lot more stable than the plastic. Okay, I'll send that recommendation in the cabin. Okay. Well, Any we did go with Doug for most of the stuff on, on the porch and everything. So yeah, you get fur out there everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But most um, people fur you, you know, my last year. What's that? For you know six seven years, if you're not you know painting the ends and well, if you're not diligent, if you're not diligent, you're yeah. not doing underneath. When you think about it, there's never any sun under there, but humidity. So the humidity's just coming up, and so my again, I've proven the point. Before they nail them down, put two coats of oil base down, and it'll we'll, we'll last you decades. Okay. Okay. Anything else, anybody? Um, so I'm hearing the feedback from the group being uh, get a couple of other quotes for the, for similar work, just uh, to make sure you have a sense of the sure the overall expense and. And the CPC will off, will ask for that as well. Okay. Um, and the deck work would not be eligible, so your final application should not okay. gotcha. include uh, All right. deck yep. stuff. We'll resubmit. Yeah. I know I asked this the first time you do a great job, by the way. Oh, thanks. How many, realistically, can you say how many times you might be coming to CPC? <clears throat> well, if it's only exterior, this, this would be the last. Is <laughs> the last. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I think that was the impression we got from the the last round because I think we submitted the larger quote came here and mm -hmm. we had the conversation about exterior only. That's when we took mm -hmm. out the other costs, right. came back with the the smaller ask. But then yeah. with Kevin out there and all the amazing work he's done has been feeding back to us. We still need to do this. We still need to do this. This isn't. Mm -hmm. This wasn't kind of considered in some of those original quotes with the previous person who was working on the building for us. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that's why this idea of coming back again for this one last exterior, finish it up. and Because then we then switch to focusing entirely on the interior. interior. And that's what we've right. that's what we've been mm -hmm. working on now that the building is. You could sell it for NCPC too. Yeah. Because yep. if we know that someone's going to keep coming back, coming back, 
we're hesitant <coughs> on because we're trying to be fair to other applicants. Sure. Also. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's totally understandable. This is it. Yeah. And we have our own fundraising that's happening. We're yeah. not, we're not, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've got another golf tournament coming up next spring that did well for us last year, yeah. uh, especially for the first go around. I think, we, I think we pulled, we pulled around eight grand out of that yeah. the first, okay. first, first go. And this is going to be a memorial tournament to Corey Sullivan, so, uh, who was one of the um, local service members that we dedicated the bench to out, out there. So um, it should do well. Uh, and we're, we're kind of like working, we're working the date around other more popular golf tournaments in this area. Um, plus, I think that's a good idea. Yep. Plus working, um, working on a possible fall. Um, uh, fall out, out, something outside. Yeah, yeah. No, outside type of thing. We're, we're trying to work those details out. Beer tends to work really well in this mm -hmm. town. <laughs> it does very well. We have a beautiful space. <laughs> what does, I'm sorry? Beer oh. does very well in this town. I mean, I, I don't want to turn it into a beer fest, but, um, you know, it's just it, it tends to raise a lot of money for a yeah. lot of people. But you'll sober up by the time you walk out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we have some plans. And then I think we have some plans, we've yeah. had some preliminary conversations a while back with some of the um, with some of the vocational technical schools in the area, and they mm -hmm. said exterior was more than they could yeah. take on, but they would consider once that was sorted, they would consider interior coming back work. and doing yeah. some interior projects Definitely. more. So cool. I think we have a kind of a lineup of people we want to talk to about mm -hmm. interior work now that we've really been able to do some great things. If if for some reason we needed something done for the interior, it's in our it's in our our minds that at some point we may ask. For the interior, I know we've gone and asked for the entire interior before, and there have been issues with it um, because of the fact that the place was, um, uh, it was hard to tell what was there before. Um, it was pretty well torn apart and uh, gutted out, and you really can't go back and historically um, re uh, um, renovate everything. Because uh, you had no idea what's there, yeah. everything in there, and I, I, the last CPA meeting, I gave I passed out pictures um, that showed the interior where the '50s and '60s wallpaper and trim that had been put over time. Oak Plimpton didn't have anything. Hmm? Oak Plimpton didn't have anything. No, no, nope, he didn't. Wow. Nothing. Uh, nothing of that. But I still, I've, I've been talking lately to uh, some relatives of the caretakers that used to be there uh, from the Brennick family. And from the Nelson family, and I'm constantly after them to give me pictures of the interior or or of something of the farm from back in the 30s and 40s, when it was solely an Ames caretake taker house. Um, still working on it. Um, everybody's interested. Everybody's saying, "Oh, I used to live there," and it brings back all kinds of memories. Well, show me some memories, <laughs> please, because uh, um, I think we've explained before we're going to have a history room there. We'll have pictures of my ancestors that lived there. Um, in, in the uh, late 1800s, and we'll have pictures of the, uh, hopefully, of uh, the caretaker families that were there to, to kind of speak to the history of that house. Um, so we keep hoping we'll get, you know, it's, it's an evolving process. We're getting there. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Good. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you go in over. If you have any other questions, give me a call. Sounds good, Mike. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks for coming in tonight. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Oaks Ames Memorial Hall Radio Firebox Alarm Installation. That's mandated by the town. Yeah, I thought this was already approved. Yeah, we we we've we've it's it, we talked about it before, but it didn't make it to the last it round. Didn't make, it did not. It didn't make it to town meeting, correct. was it? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a new application. Yeah. For it. so, so it's the same. It's the same thing, yeah. but it's a new application. It, it, C, CPC didn't approve this? I thought they did. I don't think so. They didn't want the town meeting, so they couldn't have. This wasn't tied into the fire system. Well, it's a fire alarm. Hmm. You won't see any more pull boxes anywhere. They're gone. This is the last one, supposedly, according to Chief Partridge in town. It's still on this system, and they're chasing us to get that out of there. So that's what's going on. So, any discussion, thoughts? Uh, I 
it was what was it nine thousand dollars? It's eighty six or something like yeah. that, I think. Yeah, right and around. I think this is a necessary part of the system. Well, it's 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 being mandated by the yeah. the town, so it's I guess that's the deal. It's a no brainer. Yeah, seems as, as though. Okay. Any discussion? No. Okay. Tufts Farm assessment and plan. I did. We we more or less covered it. Um, yeah, well, I think we talked about it pretty extensively last month. Um, and as a recap, um, please, yes. my notes. Oh yeah, you're the secretary. Uh, I'm secretary. Um, I try not to let it go to my head. <laughs> um, so folks may remember that the town owns a property called Tufts Farm at 108 Canton Street. Uh, it's a farm from the 1800s. It was heavily rebuilt in the 1930s. Um, it's recommended uh, as for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, it's, it's a pretty interesting property. There's a tenant who lives there now who keeps it um, you know, occupied and uh, keeps livestock. Um, and so what the Conservation Commission wants to do is uh, come up with a comprehensive plan for more um, public facing use while still preserving the privacy of the tenants and, and the farming operations um, and a sort of a, so a reuse plan and a, um, a maintenance plan which would include uh, the um, plans and specifications and budgets to bring the farmstead area including the remaining outbuildings up to a state of good repair so that they can be much more used, usable, um, easier for public interaction as well. So to that end, um, one, the Conservation Commission has secured a group of graduate students from the Conway School of Landscape Design um, who will be uh, coming down in spring to do a, an assessment and a reuse plan for the property. And then um, if there's recommendation from this board, from the CPC, and a positive uh, vote at town meeting, um, using CPA funds to um, produce some of the more um, hard aspects of, of a plan. So uh, that would be plans and specifications. That could be surveys of wetlands and rights of way. Um, so there would be CPA money to then complete uh, a comprehensive plan to bring the property into state of good repair. So that is what that is. Um, Andrea Langhauser from the Conservation Commission is here. She's right next door. Um, I think she came in and spoke to this group a month or two ago about the kennel building, um, which is in incredibly poor condition. And uh, she can stop in if you wanted to come by and, and talk a little further. But Tim and I have both been there and I think have as, as good a, an understanding. And you've read the application, the eligibility application and talked about it at the CPC. So any other sort of comments or, or questions from folks? I agree with it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just to, if you go up there, it's it's not, is it in disrepair, would you say? It's kind of in flux. It's yeah. like it could go this way real quick or, it, you know, not beyond, but to the point of which one's the next kennel, what's the next building right. to go down. So it could really be cool. You know, it's, in, it's it's is it a working farm? I guess there's eggs, produces eggs, and this and that. But um, I, I think the goal is the better the farm, the better the product, uh, if you will. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's in poor condition, so not really easily usable. You know, there's this huge maintenance backlog. Yeah. So when you're trying to keep up with that, are you really going to be able to produce eggs or raise goats or? And he does have goats and he does have chickens, but to make it a, an actual um, economic going concern um, for if you're trying to sell the eggs um, at the farm stand, then you need uh, to keep them refrigerated, I believe, the Board of Health. So then there's an infrastructure cost to doing that sort of thing. So it, it, it's it's how can you actually bring the farmstead up to a state of good repair to support some level of active agriculture and make it um, more uh, public friendly. Yeah, visitor friendly. Visitor friendly. Income worthy. Yeah. yeah. I'm not so sure that's a goal. Yeah, it's never going to spin out money for the town. Yeah. It's, it's, I think we're fortunate actually having a tenant to live there and keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it takes a, a special personality to want to take on a property like that. Um, and I think we're pretty lucky to have someone in there. So this this would try to this would be to come up with a plan and, and, and budgets to how do you bring it up to a state of good repair and then keep it maintained. It's it's got a great there's great landscape there. Really off, off to the left hand side, it's, you know, going on the drive off to the left, a beautiful trees, a beautiful yeah. grove. Um, I think the goal would be, would, would is there a there's nothing mandated for visiting right now. I don't believe there isn't, and I don't think um, one would want to have it open. But I could see, say, four times a year, seasonal, you know, oak farm farm day open right. house. Right. Right. Um, would we put a parking lot off to the side because you can get into Flyaway Pond? So this is the other end of Flyaway Pond. Um, you know, that could be interesting. So there's ways, I think, to bring the public near the property and ways to open it to the public at a few discrete times. Yeah. Um, you know, found days. That's, that's yeah. 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 Yeah, but right now it's it's hard to do because where would you park? Where could you safely take your kids without rusty farm implements? You know, how, how would you... An electric fence. An electric fence, <laughs> yeah. Is it adjacent to the rifle club? To? The rifle club? The, yes. yes. But they shoot that way, I think. <laughs> shoot a different direction. Yeah. Between the electric fence and the rifle club. You know, bang heads with a wedding water group. And well, that's, or she passed her, it seems like there's... To see what their thoughts would be, you know. Yeah, and that's what this plan would get to. Is, is there, and and I, it's a buzzword that I can't stand, but synergies, I mean, it's a real right. thing. You know, is, is can you capitalize on that? What do you need to bring it up to a state of good repair to actually do something with? I could see them working, you know, Langwad is more fruits and veggies, mm -hmm. and down there, you know, again, just to see the process, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah. So. So that's, I think it's it's great. Right. I mean, if you went up there and, and looked, you'd say, geez, it needs this, this, and this. And that's exactly what's going to be done here. What's the tag on that? Um... Cost unknown. Uh, the placeholder um, amount is sixty thousand. Um, the final application will significantly scale that down once we get more um, cost estimates in. When we narrow the scope of. Or the cost of this group coming out. Um, the cost yes. of the group coming out is seven thousand eight hundred dollars to be paid for by the Conservation Commission. The group of students. Yes. Is that, what does that pay for, the $7,800? Um, it pays f uh, for their travel and materials costs, right. by and large. In a That's great. In yeah. a final product. Yeah. Yeah, finish, you know, assessment. Yeah. So the they'll convene and, and uh, facilitate some public meetings. So they've got this whole, like, like okay. set of, of stuff they're going to do. What is that school? Is that a high school level? Or? It's, I think it's a college. college? Okay. And it's or the school, post -high school, school of Landscape Design. Conway School of Landscape Design. Right. Cool. Um, yeah, I believe Andrea dug that up, didn't she? Yeah. She did, yeah. yeah. She, she uh, made a contact with um, someone from the Conway School at a conference she was at. That was great. great. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so we're all set with CPA stuff? Yeah, and then I think um, at the January meeting, um, a further conversation may or may not have uh, the applicants back again, um, may not. Probably not necessary, but who knows. Um, but at that meeting, the group would, after thinking about things, um, make their priorities, recommendations. You know, every year the CPC wants the relevant boards and committees to present their priority projects. So we have four that are relevant to historic right, resources. Didn't we, have, so. didn't we have eight or ten last year? It was brutal. Yeah. It was brutal. I remember yeah. thinking, oh, my God, we're going to make some enemies here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, mull it over for the month, and then when we get back together again, we'll one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one. Okay, next, Preservation Awards planning discussion. John? We're on track. I just talked, we get, uh, every day I get something in the mail from a citizenry. I talked to um, the art department, and she, oh, I emailed her. All she said was, on the 14th, I'll have a ton of images for you. I don't know what that means. On, Jan on December 14th? Yeah. What's that, the end of the week? Friday? Today's tomorrow's the 12th. Friday. So yeah, Friday. 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 Um, so um, she wasn't sure if they were digital files or not. 
because we had we asked that they could actually use digital files. Right. I did get about seven or eight digital files sent to me directly. Really. And I've been foldering them, and I haven't printed them because I didn't want to do one at a time. Yeah, make a yeah, don't make yeah, a job so out I'm of it. Yeah. Wait until I see what happens from school on Thursday. If there's any files in there, and then send them in one bunch. Um, we're a little. We're actually we're a lot behind only because of the applicants. Tim and I have been going back and forth. Um, recipients, not applicants. Recipients, yeah. recipients, correct. Yeah, one one I showed up today. The other one I'm hoping tonight. If they don't show, if they don't, if you can't get hold the next day yeah. or two. All right. I was going to say the person who does the calligraphy on vacation this week now, and the following week is the week before Christmas, and the framer goes away December twentieth. And then I got to get it into the state house to get the citations. So there's a I'll wrap this up. I hope we turn it. We got to we we wrap it up. Otherwise, we're going to have to uh, extend it. Um, so are you ahead on photos? Do you think? I don't know. I mean, if you have seven or eight digital, those you never would have had those last. Yeah, we they do. wouldn't have printed them last. If, if they, yeah, and, they, and they're good photographs. Oh, good. They're like, like wow. Really cool. Yeah. Excellent. I was surprised. Um, I spoke with the Historic Society. They're going to sponsor two signs for the recipients. The house signs. They're going to make those up for us, and we will give them. If we get two recipients. Whatever we do, yeah. Yeah. Great. So I think that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I talked to Ken Michael. He said, "Yeah, I'm, I'll do it." So, and I'm going to try to put it on the bottom to, to the recipient. Is this what 2019? No, this is two thousand. It's for the year two. Okay, so two, it will be the two thousand eighteen recipient. Okay. So yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Get that. We, the, how we got pushed into January and February for those of you who don't know or remember, our founding day was I think November or something, and with all the holidays, it just didn't work. For the town of Easton? Yeah. yeah so you try to have it like, you know, so November 7th. Yeah, so we tried to do it on the Founders Day, and it just didn't work. That we, there's just too many things going on, between all the holidays, so then we pushed it to January, and that's where we are. Yeah. But if we don't, as I said, not to hop on it, if we don't get the applicants, the recipients, if I don't get the letters, because I like to write a personal letter, why we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then once those letters are sent out, I get the calligrapher to get rock and roll, and I have to wait for because I can't give the calligrapher piece by piece. Um, I get away from Hazel to give me the, our new recipient. So there's a lot of pieces that I just can't throw at different times. They all got to come together. Um, it might happen this week, but if it doesn't, then we'll just have to. Move it on, and even if we move it on, it's really not going to affect anything. No, because the invitations haven't gone out or anything else, so I just have to change it on the town website. Um, I'm trying to think of who who would be our main rep. I mean, last year I didn't even know um, what was the gentleman. He's a short Brady. Brady, I didn't even know he was there, and I felt bad. I yeah, didn't, I didn't know who he was. No, we recognize him. Though. Yeah. Um, So are, are we still anticipating this being, what's the date? The 13th. 13th January. January. Yeah. What, is that, will that possibly change? It could possibly change. It depends. The recipient, the McDonald's, it's her birthday, the 13th. Oh, don't put any pressure on me. Her and they're coming back from Florida that day. <laughs> so Remember, don't say names. They say it. It's a big surprise. Yeah. Yeah. They say, no, we'll be there. So. Um. But you gotta let me know tomorrow. Okay? I will. I'm gonna shoot for tonight. So those are out of here. Get me some info on both of them. Just tidbit stuff, addresses, and we got the address there. Write that stuff up. Okay. And we should be good to go. I can't believe that'll be our 19th year. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, remember when the MHC they were talking about an annual thing that it was their fourth or fifth year. Wait a minute. I sent you the information once. <laughs> it was you know we've done it. 
So we'll do it again. We'll bombard him again with the info. We have pictures. Chris know, Skelly. In a thing with, um, it was a time capsule. I can't remember where it was buried. <laughs> Beautiful. You know who will know was Ed because Ed's in the picture. Oh, okay. Say, yeah. And I think Hazel's in it too. Well, we left Matrano's package store downtown and we took the package up and buried it. Those were the days you could out of the 400 Club. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're good with that. Uh, historic Research Survey, Inventory CPA, Grant Project Scope, and Wayne and I are still kicking that around. So um, what we talk, we may include, oh, the fence. Um, yeah, so if you're going to do a preservation restriction, um, MHC has to approve it, and they want to see documentation, and one of the things they want to see is an updated uh, B form um, for the resource in question with its statement of significance and why uh, we believe it is eligible for listing on the National Register. So somebody needs to create a B form for that cemetery. So that's a historic survey, people. Yeah. So we'll see how this thing runs the course through CPA, and then we got to jump on it to make it eligible for the preservation restriction. Which are they aware of that? I think they're aware of the preservation restriction. Yeah. Yes, I okay. had a conversation okay. with uh, Arlene. Okay. Um, and sent them uh, templates and examples. Yep. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Schedule next meeting. Nah, 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 nah. And I've got us penciled down as Tuesday the eighth. That still work for folks? This electronic world. <laughs> Old school. I'm good. Everybody good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know how it does autocorrect? I typed in EHC and it came up hex. <laughs> One of those ones to check autocorrect huh? after I send it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how yeah, that Autocorrect happens. is often not and I go, helpful. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. That wasn't good. <laughs> Back it up. Okay. Anything else? No. There is nothing else on the agenda, so. I do, uh, Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Good. Okay. Joe, we're all set. Whoever's in there.